Hey guys, it's Veron from Secret of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we'll be doing a slightly mixed media type of drawing. I'll be working with watercolors for the most part, but I'll also be sliding in some colored pencils and inks at the end of the video. Um, mainly because this video is another one of those drawings where I'm kind of pushing myself, but I'm also you know, trying to still enjoy myself in doing this. So for the past month or two, you might have noticed that my drawings have been a bit more um, like adventurous, I guess, I, or in the manner that I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zones, I'm trying to learn to do certain things. So the thing that I was doing last month or I think two months ago was lighting. I was practicing how to incorporate lighting more into my pieces, how to do more uh, solid or intense or darker shadows. I even did a drawing where it was um, like a pink and a blue gradient on top of a character, like what you would see in Instagram posts sometimes. So I was pushing and playing with that a little bit. For this piece, I it was a mix of both the concept and what I wanted to do. So this character in particular that I'm drawing, he likes houseplants, he takes care of houseplants, that's his thing. So I wanted to draw that in the same piece too. I wanted to draw him in a sort of like a greenhouse dash, a room for full of plants or maybe it has a, it has a ton of plants around or he would see trees and plants in the window type of thing. But as I was doing the um, what do you call that? The sketch and the line art, I felt like, I don't know, based on the composition, I didn't feel like doing all plants. So I decided to put a shelf instead. So there are books, there are little trinkets, there's stuff. There's a lot of plants, but there's other stuff. And that's the thing. I'm not really a background person. I mean, background and detail are one of my weaknesses perspective included so I usually do backgrounds either in a plain wash or they're very simple um, sometimes it's just color or sometimes I go adventures and do a little bit of structure here and there but nothing nothing detailed nothing cool because one of my my issues is that when I do backgrounds or detailed backgrounds like say a store or a library I tend to draw the background more it becomes more interesting than the focus which is the character so if i draw a library i would color and draw the books and the stuff in the library in such a way that it becomes the focus and the character just kind of disappears and that's something i've always struggled with so when i used to do digital art more often and i wanted to do a more detailed background what i would do is i would a. Blur it, or B. Make it like monochrome, which isn't super interesting, but then that's my weakness. So I've been trying to practice on how to make that more interesting, try to incorporate more detail and backgrounds into my work. So this is the first one, I guess, for this year. I haven't really done partic anything particularly background intensive lately. So yeah, that's that's the... That's the push for this this drawing, doing detail. And I think I did a pretty decent job, especially um, on the first and the second layer. The third layer is a little bit meh. Uh, I think I got lazy at that point. That's, that's another thing, that's another issue. I'm not really the type of artist that enjoys... Um, no, how do I put this? I don't like lose myself in the process or like revel in the process um i'm the type that wants to see the product or the end goal on paper right away so if i imagine this particular scene as fast as possible i want to see it done and that's that's been something that i've been working on it's something i managed to you know t train out out of my system a little bit especially when i started taking a couple of art classes in college um, having to work with oil and acrylic and pastel it made me appreciate the process a bit more and enjoy myself 
just doing the thing more than just wanting to have something in front of me right away. But that's still something that I kind of have to wheel in every now and then. Especially with the concept that I feel like I'm super uh, interested about. Something I just want it slapped on right away. But because I'm rushing or because I'm impatient, it never looks like what I have in, or it's not even close to what I have in my head. But sometimes when I take time with pieces like this one, it's pretty close to what I imagined. I mean, if I put in more effort in certain parts, like if I didn't skimp out on coloring this section, or maybe if I decided to do this for this section, it would have looked better. But sometimes, you gotta work with your limits. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of impressed and happy with myself that I managed to get this much detail out of me. I'm pretty sure I can push even further. I probably just need reference and, you know, things to base off of it and just not come off completely my imagination. So that's something for next time. So I won't really exactly talk through the entire video. It's 24-ish minutes long. So I will come back in when I think of something interesting to say or if there's something I really want to point out. But for now, just enjoy the music. Good. I'll mention it right now before I forget. We're actually using True Paint today, and if you've watched my channel or if you watch one of my older videos, you know that I used to use these True Paints a lot. So these are the Reeves watercolor True Paints. They're student grade, I believe. Um, they're the only True Paints I actually own. That I mean, yeah, they're the only decent True Paints I own. I own like a Best Buy one, but meh. <laughs> So, um, they're pretty. I used these when I was in college just to learn how to use watercolor. Um, they're a little chalky when they dry, but as a beginner, it's more than good enough. E like, even for me right now, I, they're, they're more than good enough for me. Um, especially since I don't plan on selling them, so I don't really. I have any, I know nothing about the light fastness of the paints. Um, but yeah, they're, they're okay, they're decent. If you want some beginner true paints, they're good to use. So I live in the Philippines, um, so there are a couple of options. I mean, nowadays in 2019, there are a lot more options to buy stuff uh, that are beginner level and not like, say, the Daniel Smithers or Van Gogh or anything like that. But I would recommend that if you're a beginner and you want 
to learn on like for me i mean this could vary from person to person so just take this as my experience my opinion please don't get offended or anything um for me if you i don't know it feels more comfortable to start watercolors with tubes and i know that it's super intimidating for a lot of people i mean and if when i bought those cheap nonsense best buy paints i was really intimidated because they were tube paints and i know that tube paints are supposed to be like you know cool and professional and <laughs> my misguided younger high school self didn't know that but i had i was intimidated by them but when when i used this weaves watercolor I learned, a, I learned a lot in terms of water control, color mixing, um, portion control in terms of the paint. So one thing you might notice when I put down the paint on the palette is one thing I learned from college is that you would tap the tube just a little bit on the pad, especially if you don't need a lot of the paint. I, I haven't done it in a while, so I'm a little bit out of practice. So I have a lot of paint left, but you just tap a little bit to get a little bit of dollop a little small dollop of paint out and that's all you need sometimes it also taught me a lot in terms of color mixing so one issue of people in general i think when you're mixing colors is that it's hard to mix the same color again and i feel like i got to a point where i can decently remake color or at least i can keep on i know how to mix colors to a point where i can somewhat get the same color that i wanted and I feel like I got to do that a lot more easier because they're tube paints. And I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just because I started with tube paints and not with pans that I feel more comfortable with them. I feel like with pans, because I own a, a couple of pan paints. I have the Skoda I have a Prima Confection pan. I have a, um, what do you call that? Kura Tahigan Saitambi. So, I don't dislike pans, but one thing that I can say about the pan paints is that I feel like I have a lot more difficulty with like sometimes saturation, with color mixing. I think because also the, because the palettes are plastic sometimes or it's plastic coated, it feels a little bit harder for me to mix stuff. And also with portion control, so sometimes I would just like tap on the edge of the palette to get some of the paint off, which is what a lot of people do. But I feel like it's more controlled, I think, with with tubes or with a metal palette. I'm not really sure. I, it might be just a plastic coating or just plastics in general. Also with, with tube, uh, rather with pan paints, I feel like I rely on the existing colors more. I think that's the point of pan paints actually, so that you don't have to mix all the time and you're ready to go but i feel like it kind of limited me a little bit in terms of what colors i use and i feel like that's something i have a bit more freedom with 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 fan paints i would shoot paint other because if you compare my video that where i use a kudakoi versus this it's you know i, I mix more because obviously i don't have all the colors i use certain tones and blend some more. I don't really use it off of the tube, which I do sometimes, but I don't always just use it off the tube. Unlike with fan paint, I just dip on the color, just go heck with it. So there are pros and cons, and this is something I talked about before with... I might have, I might have mentioned it on my channel. I'm not... I didn't make a dedicated video on it, but if you want, I guess I can talk about it. Let, let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. But mm, the pro with tubes is that they're exactly what I said. It's more, I find more freedom in terms of mixing. Portion control becomes a thing. Or you learn to do portion control. You you learn to use different colors that's not straight out of the tube. Um, also, water control is great with tubes because they're already kind of liquid. So... Um, I feel like they're more... How do I put this? Um, <laughs> I don't know how to put it because with, with, with the pans, I just like put as much water on it as possible to to make the pigment melt a little bit so they can use it. But 
with with tubes because they're already wet. It's this little bit more technique. I'm not really sure how to put it actually. Um, please don't get offended, people who use pants. I use pants too. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, well, not that anyone will watch. I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> okay, so those are the pros of the of tubes. The con of tubes is that, is that they're intimidating because it's in a metal tube. You feel like it's gonna be a waste on you. But this watercolor, just remember, watercolor can be reactivated. So it's fine. Just squeeze out as much as you want and keep the palette dirty and reuse the color some other time. Uh, yeah, the thing with tubes is, is that they're intimidating. They're also not the easiest to bring around. So what some people do is that they take their tube paints and put it in a palette or a pan. I'm not sure what people really call it. Some people call it pan, some people call it pan. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so they're not really easy to bring around. If you want to sketch in a place that's not your house or a cafe or, or I don't know, or your school, I guess, where, where there's no like, really good allocated space where you can just paint, they're not easy to use because you need the palette, you need the tubes, you need water, you need brushes, or you can use a water brush. I mean, that's an option. Uh, yeah, and then you need, I guess, you need either a paper towel or uh, in my case, I use paper in in replacement of paper towels. Don't worry, that paper is all scrap paper, and it's fine. I'm just recycling it. So that's the con of tube paints. They're not travel friendly, they're intimidating. That's it. They're also expensive sometimes. Like the the more higher quality tube paints, they're pretty expensive. The Reeves is a beginner set, a student set, so it was fine. But if I wanted to worry about things like light fastness, they get kinda pricey, as with anything that's true, I think. Okay, so in terms of the fans and I can go in deeper, I guess that's, that is basically my, my opinion. With the pans, they're ready to go. You don't need to worry about mixing colors so much because you can just use what's on the set. They're easy to bring around. Like the school liquid that I own, I bring them around a lot. I've been to the hospital. I brought them to work once. Um, hmm. I brought them to cafes. I brought them to provinces, out of town trips. It's easy to bring them around. Uh, water, you can just get the water from uh, what is easy to get usually. And you can get, if you should, has a water brush or if you own a water brush, you're, you're set. Also, they're kind of less intimidating because like, they're, so they're still cute in their little packaging. They're like little cakes. But I think you do call them, some people call them cakes. Right? Most people call them pants, I think. But they look like little blocks of color, so they're a bit more friendly to see than a tube. <laughs> so I feel like a lot of people gravitate more to pants, mostly because they're easy to bring around and that they're handy. My con for them is that I feel like I relied a lot more on the premix colors and I feel like I kind of forgot. I mean, it's not the fault of the pan, I think, but I kind of can change my technique up to mix less and just like layer the colors on more instead of doing mixing. Now that's okay to some people, that's a, that's a pro or a con to some people, so it depends. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's what I think about it. But I love the, I do love the pants. I bring my Pima, oh no, not my Pima, my Sakura Koi around. When I, when I know that I need something else, or I need maybe there's a lot of time that's gonna be used up, I usually bring them around. But yeah, that's my general opinion on watercolors. Gener either or, I think they're both good ways to get into watercolor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That being said, the paper that I'm using today is the Canson watercolor pad in 200 GSM. This is the one with the what? Uh, no, not the water balloon. It's a hot air balloon on the cover. And I remember when I reviewed the Berkeley watercolor pad, um, which I hated. And I might come back to it sometime to see if it's just my technique or if it's really the paper. <laughs> but 
back then, I recommended if you're gonna buy a sketchpad, might as well go for the Canson one. Because at the time of posting, there weren't a lot of art stores that carried different brands yet. So, in National Bookstore before, they had the Canson, they had the Super Kelly stuff, they had, um, I think they also had other brands like Corona, I think. But if you look for watercolor paper, like those are the first things that you see. Nowadays, there are a lot more art shops and online stores also carry a lot of watercolor paper nowadays. So there's Fabriano. I mean, there's still Canson. I, yeah, the Arches. So there's Arches, there's the Excel pad. There's a lot of stuff now. And honestly, I haven't tried a lot yet. Or I have, I've kind of been left behind since I have so much paper. But yeah. So I said before that my recommendation is to get the Canson. Mostly because the sizing is much friendlier to beginners than, than the Berkeley one. I felt like the Berkeley one just sucked up all of the moisture in your pen or brush. But the Canson, on the other hand, had a lot of sizing so that it's easy to lift, it's easy to blend, all that. But now, I've experienced the Fabiano watercolor paper. Um, maybe there's too much sizing? It's okay. Here's the thing, if you're a beginner, I would still say Canson. Canson is one of my favorite brands for watercolor paper. If you're planning to go up a step a bit, that's when you get into the more arches and the Fabriano stages. So if you compare, it's not really worth comparing the Fabriano to this, ouch, this Canson paper. But I feel like there's a little bit too much sizing, so one of the techniques that I kind of develops through because I was using pan paint was to do layering. So instead of mixing the colors together, I would just layer them, them on top of each other and they kind of mix but not really. Uh, so I tried doing that now with, with tube paints on this paper and I discovered that it's a bit hard to layer. Especially if the paint is super saturated. So with the hair, you notice that I'm using colored pencils now, and that was because I couldn't layer anymore. If I added more water on top of it, it would just lift the paint. So I ended up using colored pencils to create detail instead, to darken the hair, just to add more stuff. So that's one thing against the Canson pad. I think I might do reviews really, really soon on it. Um, but that's one thing. It's easy to get around that kind of issue. I mean, just don't layer then. This is the. <laughs> I mean, you can layer, just don't layer too much is the answer. So, I guess that's one thing to note about it. Like, it's slippery. That's what I mentioned before. It felt slippery. It was, it was the sizing on the, on the paper. Okay, so, we're now using ink. It's, from what I know, from what I remember, it's the last step in this process. I just wanted to add a little bit more detail, it's a little bit of gold ink here and there. I wasn't really sure why it's, I was having a hard time putting down the inks. But it's just a little bit, nothing too distracting, just a little cute little detail. And yeah, we're done with the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, consider liking, commenting maybe too. Uh, if you enjoyed it, if you really enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe. I do painting, watercolor, anime style, fan art, blah blah blah, all of that. So you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and DeviantArt as well, and I'll see you around.